Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Investing Bros. If you're listening to the sound of my voice, you're you're watching. That's what that means. Uh, or I guess you heard the sound of my voice. You might have your eyes closed during this portion. But it is our Friday show, the last show of the week. In case you guys are new, uh, we go live every morning, Friday, Monday through Friday, nine to ten a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And today we got an interesting show for you because at first. There wasn't looking like a whole lot of news to cover, but in Pond Digging, there's some really juicy stuff happening right now. And I know you guys might be like me and you're getting tired of hearing FTX, FTX, FTX. But a whole new list of creditors has come out with some big names. And guess what gets even bigger is the amount of money they owe to those said businesses. We're going to be talking about that and a lot more. Also, got some bad news because we just ticked into greed on Bitcoin for the first time since March of last year. The problem is, the last time we were at these levels, we were $25,000 higher in price. What does this mean for Bitcoin and the rest of the crypto space now that we've ticked back into greed? We're gonna be talking about that and a whole lot more in this show, so make sure you don't go anywhere. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel because we got some great content. If you are already here, smash that like button. We got a couple people who have not done that already. In case you're wondering what it is, it is that four-fingered little mitten right below where you're looking at at me right now it might be gray turn it white and then we're good to go i'm joined by my great favorite amazing spectacular illustrious smiling co-host t shroom how are you doing this morning man uh, extra illustrious Ooh. and if you're listening to the sound of my voice then you'd know that that i i am always yes. illustrious so here i am before you illustrious and uh very happy because uh, we've got some really good uh, economic data that just printed at 8.30 Eastern Time. But before we get into that, let's check out the quote of the day. Whoa. That being, all money is a matter of belief. And who said that? None other than the father of economics, Adam Smith. So all money is a matter of belief. Tim, is this true? Is this true what, what we're hearing this morning? I don't know. I... I haven't put too much thought to it. I I'd, I'd never even heard that quote before. You never heard the quote. That's that's okay. What does I that, mean, what does that even mean really? It, it, it's I feel like you can go really deep with that one. Well, I mean it's like money is a social construct. Yeah, is sure. go, I mean is would you consider gold to be the same thing anyway? Okay, maybe that's not that great of a quote of the day. Or maybe it's the best quote of the day you've done so far and it just re would require a lot more depth of thought than what we're able to put into it at this time. It, it's more like the quote of the year. Maybe. Because we are crypto analysts and crypto enthusiasts, and we are in a time where money is being redefined, as so many things that we thought were so well-defined yeah. are also being well-defined, yeah. redefined. Yeah. That happens. So that's where we are. Well, let's uh, really quickly get into this economic data that just printed. Yes. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so the core PCE uh, met expectations. So the mm. forecast was 44 here on my screen, this is for core PCE, which is a which is very similar to CPI, but it's slightly different. Uh, so the forecast was met and also came in lower than previously, so that's good. And then you also uh, have the the headline PCE came in lower than previous. There was no forecast for that for some reason. Uh, and when the M Michigan consumer sentiment has not printed, that will print at ten. Yeah. So at the end of this, so we will not cover that, but. Good numbers there. Also yesterday, guys, we uh, had a really good print yesterday with GDP. GDP came in uh, higher than forecasted, uh, but lower than previous. So that is your Q over Q. So quarterly uh, for Q4 um, GDP. So back to you, Tim. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. We got, uh, we got more stuff we'll cover in the second half hour. We got some stories. But we're also going to talk about, because I didn't realize, uh, those of you who have been watching, let me know in chat. Put a one if you were around, we'll say within the first five shows on the channel. To me, T Shroom, mm -hmm. I feel like we've been shooting in this room for yeah. like six months. Yeah, it's it's felt like a long time. It's it is felt it has only been it's been less than two months because our first show was November thirtieth. What? Second show December December first, and we still got a couple more days of January left. That's this crazy. is uh this is pretty crazy. Do we how many more shows? Let's see. If if today's the 27th, 28th, 29th, 
So we'll have another show on the 30th of January and the 31st. We have two more shows in January after today. Yeah. Seen a lot of ones in chat. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So tell me how you guys feel. Has it felt like it's only been two months or has it felt a lot longer? It's really crazy. But we're going to talk more about that. We're going to go over some of the things we've accomplished in the last two months Mm -hmm. since starting Investing Bros Mm -hmm. at the end of the show. So stay tuned for that because, again, it's going to be almost like a a flashback celebration. And shout out to all of you guys for how awesome you have been. I do want to speak about how awesome you guys are on a deeper level, though, starting with before I get into chat, I'm going to start doing every single day three big shout outs from our Discord, which has been been an absolute blast that's not it's like a week old now we started on monday oh it's been great the discord or tuesday it's we been start great. tuesday or monday monday or tuesday i think soft launch on monday hard yes, launch on tuesday that's correct because you weren't here monday we did the soft launch yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. so i want to shout out three people from that list gia s crypto mini bike and e low brown uh i've been saying his name sometimes i call him elo um and uh his name is elo so shout out to those three uh, thank you for being a part of our Patreon and being a part of that amazing Discord. Woo-hoo. Great stuff happening over there. Let's read some of these names, though, in chat on YouTube. And I'm going to, again, I'm probably going to list about 10 of them. So this will encourage you guys to get in here early, get mm-hmm. into your names, one of the first 10 people. Mm-hmm. But I got to start off with the first one in the morning, Mr. Bitcoin himself. Shout what? out to Mr. Bitcoin. Curtis Rorick is here. Yair Navarro, Brian Hoskins, Crypto Set Guy, one of our moderators. Uh, Mr. J is here. Joe Watkins. Uh, let's see who else. Uptex Claymore, uh, um, CBD Suddy, and Josh Denham. Those are the list. I will say CBD Suddy came in. He was saying that he came to give a like, and he's feeling sick. So prayers and love to CBD Suddy. If you're still watching or if you went back to sleep, get better, my friend, and we will see you Monday. Get some good soup. Yes. With that, I, I don't know. Did you already cover it? D- d- are there other headlines we're going to talk about in the second half hour we want to kind of tease right now? Or did you already cover everything we're going to be talking about? I can talk about those right now. Yeah, what are, what are the other stories? And then we'll jump into some tea, tea of A. Well, we're going to look at the Fear and Greed Index charts for sure. We're also going to check in on Polygon. Uh, we're going to hear about some some crypto shenanigans that uh, Ted Cruz might be up to. Mm. Uh, we're going to look into that. Uh, we haven't covered it yet. The senator that's looking to pass a bill in Arizona to make Bitcoin legal tender. What? That could be kind of crazy. And then we're going to check out FTX's books because it has been revealed who they owe a bunch of money to. And these names are pretty crazy. And our thumbnail may be a bit of an indication of who those people might be. That's going to conclude our headline. Yeah. Well, there's a sneak. There's a lot of names. If you want to go deeper, I don't know how many people on YouTube do this. Uh, on YouTube, there's a description box, and I put a couple more business names in that description box. Did you? So if they want to go click there. And while they're down there, there's other really cool things if you want there to look is. around in the description. There is. Uh, you're welcome to do so. Let's go ahead and jump in, and let's do some old T of A. And this is the second day. I have some detailed notes. So if you guys ever see me, you can see me in the corner. I'm looking this way to do my TA, and if you see me looking back this way, it's because I'm, I'm making sure I'm staying up on my notes. So things to keep your eyes on here, and, and, and we're, we're looking like that those PCE numbers, as expected, I think the price was kind of baked in. Bitcoin's price isn't responding that aggressively. I'm on the hourly chart right now just showing you guys what's happening here because I wanted to see how drastically those candles would move. Not really. You know, uh, they the came out at 8.30. We have a, a red candle technically uh, for 8 o'clock. Uh, but we got wicks above and below, and then we're starting. We're only only eight minutes into the ninth, uh, the yeah ninth hour. Well, let's see. This is ninth hour of the day, but it's ninth hour of of my day, uh, and uh, it's green, not anything spectacular. So we'll keep our eyes on that. But overall, I think that stayed kind of neutral. We play, made a lot of playing around last night. I'm gonna move out to the four hourly chart. Uh, broke back down here into our pennant. Some of you guys have been uh, watching the show, so we've been talking about this little bull pennant that we have been in now for a little bit. What am I looking at right here? What Which chart am I on? I'm on the middle chart. Let me go over. I want to switch to my other chart and look what's happening. There we go. I like that a lot better. Why the heck do I have that? There we go. So we, we fell back down into our bull pennant here just a little bit ago. I'm going to go back to the four-hour chart, bam, last night. And I, I, I was on Discord with all of our members, and I, I told them, hey, don't necessarily get too worried that we're dropping. Because I, this was one of those things last night. I'm going to pause here. I remember clicking on. The price was hovering around 22.9, and I was about to make a post saying, oh, we're about to retest resistance. And I just watched the four-hourly candle just drop all the way down here. 
The issue is, though, when you pull up the RSI, we started to show a little bit of a bullish divergence. Now, this is what we would call a weak bullish divergence, where the RSI bottoms matched up, but then the price bottoms of closing candles went to the upside. This is what we call weak divergence, but it's still bullish divergence. I, I've pointed that on the Discord, and sure enough, we ended up finding support and heading back up to the upside. So, uh, very important. Any of you guys were watching that and wondering, oh, is this the dip? Well, guess what's happening right now? The, this this little rally is coming up. We rallied all the way up to 30, uh, 23,800. It kind of faked out, dropped back down. Now we had a little wick come all the way down here. We're still within, on the four hour chart, we're still within a constricted Bollinger Bands, meaning a breakout is coming soon. But now, within the last day, we have tested both the top and the bottom of this Bollinger Bands, kind of solidifying, hey, this is a nice tight space. What are we going to do when we break out? And that's the real question because there's still a lot of signs above us that we could keep going higher, but especially with looking at things like the fear and greed index coming in in greed, it's starting to maybe concern me and I, I, I'm going to keep my eyes open. Hey, if we drop, here's some levels we're going to talk about, but I'm going to get to that here in just a little bit of, in the future. Let's see what else is happening here. We're going to pull up the fixed range volume profile, I believe here on the daily chart. I want to look at some things. We're still looking... I've pulled up my RSI now, don't need you, thank you. I'm still looking at 25,200 as a level to keep your eyes on for a bullish move. Uh, we've explained this for a lot of reasons, but let's look at this fixed range volume profile and see what is happening here. Um, oh, so this fixed range volume profile, this is this is the question right here. So on the 25,000, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of things saying that we're gonna go up there. I'm gonna cover and just saying, but watch this peak on fixed range volume profile. You guys can see right here there is a level right at twenty four thousand that is a little alarming. That if we cannot get above, we could go even lower. And this I've told you guys before. My personal belief is if we cannot close above twenty five thousand, I still think there's a reasonable chance down the road we could hit new lows. Is that probability very likely? I don't think so. I think we've done a lot of things to say that the bottom more than likely is in. However, I can tell you right now that probability of a new bottom would drop drastically if we can start closing some candles above 25.2. If we only hit our heads here at 24,000 and we get stuck at that little peak on the fixed range volume profile, watch out because that could be a sign of giving us still some reasonable doubt that the bottom is in. I did a video the other day talking about reasons why the bottom could and should be in, and you guys can go check that out as well. But yeah, everyone knows in technical analysis, it's not about saying, hey, this is exactly, I can guarantee this is what's gonna happen. It's about saying, hey, here's the probabilities of this happening. Here's the probabilities of this happening. This is the likelihood. This is what you should keep your eyes on. So I wanna make sure I'm preparing you guys for both bullish outlook and bearish outlook. There is still reason to believe that we can get above this $25,200 level. Let me move this over here just so it stays out of the way. And the reason for that is looking right here at this falling wedge pattern. This is the breakout. Use this little line right here. This is the opening of that falling wedge, moving it over to where we broke the resistance level. This gives us a price prediction right there of 25,900, give or take 26,000. Also, we have this little bull pennant I talked about in the four hourly chart. This little bull pennant, if we used it correctly and came to its breakout point, so now we gotta move it on down here, this would give us a price prediction of 25,400. Both those numbers, in case you know you haven't done the quick math, 25,400 and 26,000, that's higher than 25,200. Uh, so that would get us above those levels. And that kind of opens up this new camp. And I talked about this yesterday, but for anyone who maybe missed the show, let's go back out to the daily chart and talk about that, is what happens? What happens if we get back above 25,200? If we can reclaim and, and beat out this peak we had back in August of 2022, is that where we stop? How much further can we go? And to answer that, what we're really looking at right here is 28,456. This is a level, yes, we have a couple wicks lower than it than we had back in May of 2022, but this is where we closed a lot of candles out on the daily chart. And when I kind of zoom out and give us maybe a, a bigger look, let's put the let's put the fixed range volume profile all the way back here to the dip in May of 21 after Elon's whole ordeal where he sold some Bitcoin and, and kind of gave us uh, some concern. Look what happens when we break 25,200. I've told you guys before, the important things on fixed range volume profile is looking at peaks and looking at valleys. However, in this case, when we hit this valley at 25,200, there's just nothing really. It's, it starts a little bit, I, I guess technically keep your eyes around 27,400 as well. That's a fair level. But even this between 27 and 28,400, 
There's not a lot of volume there either. I think if we can get above 25.2, it's pretty reasonable. It's not going to just happen overnight, but I think we can continue to work our way up towards 28.456. That is where I think what we will see a, a, a reversal. If we don't reverse at 24,000 and if we don't reverse at 25,2, I think the next level to keep your eyes on would be 28,400. I've seen other analysts talking about getting up back into the 30s, coming back to the peaks we had here at 32,000 back in May. To me, again, it's possible, but especially is that we're already overextended when, when you're looking at a lot of the oscillators and indicators. We're looking right here at the, uh, the RSI on the daily chart. Uh, we're looking right here at the Lux Algo a feature telling us, hey, man, it's overbought drastically. I think a lot of people are going to want to sell. The fact that we've had momentum kind of slow down when you look at the, uh, the these little pumps we've had, again, right here, massive volume and massive price raise and a little less. And then sure enough, even right this, we're, we're kind of struggling to break back out of here. I think that getting above 28,400 in this little pump over the next couple of weeks and months is a little hard. I'm still expecting probably sometime late February or early to mid-March, I think there's a good dip. And we're gonna talk about those levels here in just a little bit because those levels will come into play whether we dip here in the next little bit or whether we wait a little bit longer. Of course, Jerome Powell also has a lot to say about that. But let's keep moving on and see what we got going on over here. So let's go ahead and pull up our Lux Algo. Oh, I was gonna say, okay, here's what I was gonna say. Lux Algo seems to also be agreeing with these levels of 28,000 before we move on and look at some other charts as well. So I told you guys, this is the level uh, right here. Uh, what am I looking at here? Oh, there's a weekly chart. Weekly chart, if you look at the Lux Algo on the weekly chart, it's giving us a take profit uh, right up at these same levels, 28,400. Why are you not giving me a reversal cloud? Oh, that's crazy high. Holy cow. We don't have a reversal cloud on the weekly chart to all the way 45,000, but that is, uh, that's way above us. Don't necessarily concern yourself too much with that. We do have the weekly chart take profit up here at 28,400. So just another reason to potentially keep your eyes on that. Here's one thing to notice on the weekly chart though, we do not have, even though we have a buy signal that just came in, we do not have our green trend catcher. So anyone who's sitting here saying, oh, well, Tim just said take profit levels up there. Luxalgo just said buy, we should go ahead and buy, right? No, if you use Luxalgo correctly, you're waiting for the trifecta of not only we don't have a, per a green candle yet, this is purple. We wanna see a green candle. We wanna see a green trend catcher and a buy signal. You don't necessarily have to wait for all three to enter buy, but if you enter a long using Lux Algo, you want to keep monitoring it, having a good stop loss. If it turns green, if all three of those things turn green, that's when it's your confirmation. All right, I'm good. Go ahead and hold out. Let's go ahead and ride this to the tape profit. For now, though, that's not necessarily guaranteed, but it is something just to keep your eyes on that that's kind of uh, helping us right there. But let's go ahead, while we're on Lux Algo, we don't talk about, we don't go heavily into detail. Let's take a look at a lot of different charts uh, with Lux Algo, and I'm gonna kind of break down what we're seeing here. So the first thing we're looking at, let me actually go over to this screen right here. I don't want that offer. Thank you for giving it to me though. Uh, let's take a look starting out on the weekly chart with Lux Algo and kind of work our way down and see what's happening. I'm even gonna pull up our fixed range, our, our oscillator. So we have just been in a lot, a lot of oversold territory on the weekly chart, according to the Lux Algo oscillator. So that's another good sign that we're starting to move bullish, got our buy signal. But once, once again, like I said, we're waiting on green candles and green trend catcher. So let's keep our eyes there. Moving down to the daily chart, we have talked about this before, but we were overextended on our, our daily chart, getting above the reversal cloud. This does not happen often. In fact, the last time we saw it, in case you hadn't seen our video, is all the way back to, what was that? It was January of 2021 during that massive rally. But guess what? Sometimes when you do this, you end up continuing to the upside. So we're hoping now that we've gotten overextended, maybe we get one more good push. The question is, can that good push just get us above 25,000? Does it get up to 28? Does it go even higher? We'll see. But as I, I kind of said, watch potentially as we see the price of Bitcoin kind of move out sideways, waiting for these reversal bands to move to the upside. That does look like it is what's forming. The question is, will the price continue to the upside or will we see a little bit of a dip and then we come back up to visit those prices later. So that's what we're seeing on the daily chart. Let's keep moving down and look at what's happening down on the four hourly chart. Give you some shorter timeline things, maybe even next couple of days. We're under a strong buy signal and in this little rally, just so you guys know, using Lux Algo, yes, we had a sell signal here a little bit ago, but notice these sell signals kind of flash 
Very bad opportunities. It, it, we have a sell signal right here, and then just a little bit later, we start moving bullish and then get strong again. During a bull trend, the, the strong signals, the green signals, the buy signals, they're going to be the stronger indicators. So even though we just got a sell right here, the fact that we just flashed buy again until we see this trend reverse, the trend is your friend until it ends. Watch as it says right here, the take profit on the shorter timeline, 23 700 lux algo looks like it's not necessarily predicting a breakthrough within the next couple of days so we'll keep our eyes on that even moving down to the hourly chart i do believe we are under a sell signal let's see if that flipped yeah so sell signal but technically speaking we we hit the take profit right as it flashed the sell signal and we're back up again we're in an uptrend so i'm not necessarily reading too strongly into that uh, so that is what we have going on with Lux Algo. The good thing is, is right now there is definitely, definitely still room to the upside. The only one that's kind of bearish here, the daily chart, like I said, yes, it's saying over, uh, overbought right now on the oscillator. Yes, we got over the bands, but this happens on previous rallies. And if we can just continue to move sideways, this band is starting to give us more room to the upside to get above that 25,000 here on Bitcoin. Let me look and see if we have anything else happening here. Uh, there was one more thing that I thought I saw that was very concerning to me. And let's go over here to my other chart and uh, pull up something that I haven't pulled up very much. And that is the MACD. But uh, this is still a very, very important indicator. And if I go out to the daily chart, there is something that is concerning me. And that is that our MACD is starting to curl over. This blue line right here, the orange line. If you're noticing, we've been green here for a while during this pump, but we're starting to curve over and not just mate sideways. That blue line is starting to come down, meaning a reversal is potentially coming here in the future. So this is just another one of those signs. I'm like, you might be saying, Tim, what do I do with this information? What, what does it matter that the MACD is curling over? Well, we got some bullish signs still in, in technicals, but we're starting to get some bearish. So whether we have to wait for one more good pump, or whether it happens now, a reversal is coming and we're seeing all those signs kind of add up together. Last thing I'll show you guys here is if we go to the downside, what are we going to be looking for? So uh, this for this one, I'm going to go back out to, yes, going to go back out to this chart right here, even though it is crazy. Got to take my Lux Algo down for you guys. But let's pull up our SMAs and take a look at what is happening here on Bitcoin. Some levels below us that you're going to want to keep your eyes on. The first one I would say, let's say we reverse right now, or even if we come up towards 24,000 and then we dip that down, watch the 20 SMA as it is climbing. That's going to be our first level of defense and support in a dip. And I'm not going to be able to tell you and pinpoint exactly where that price would be. But as it's climbing, more than likely it could be end up meeting us. Let's say this price were to hover for a little bit, Maybe even, nope, didn't want to grab you. Uh, let's say it hovers or even comes up to 24,000 and comes back down. It looks like we'd probably match and meet this 20 right around these support levels right here at 22,400. So that's our first level we're going to be keeping our eyes on. The second one is going to be our 200 daily uh, moving average, which is lining up just perfectly with a level we've talked about for a while, 19,600. So not only do we have the 200 SMA being at that spot, which should be a nice little level of support. If you were to pull up our fixed range volume profile and go back here for a little bit of space, let's go all the way back. Oh, we'll do the same thing. We'll go back. We'll go back to where it was over where those prices last year or not last year, a couple years ago. This is where you're going to see a massive amount of volume coming in. That is a nice little valley right there. And again, the most important places are valleys and peaks. But again, this is a level right here that we have a lot of volume in. So if the bears were to try to take back control, this would be a nice little spot to look for. But there's one silver lining to a dip that far because several of you might be like, all right, uh, you know, that's not a rally I wanted. I, I wanted this rally to continue. The first thing is that's another spot you can go in and buy. The second one is, is guess what? If we come down here and bottom at these levels and then start to rally again, that is a new higher low. Guess what bull runs need? They need higher highs, higher lows. As long as we continue that, that is good bullish moves to the upside and you love to see them. That is all the Bitcoin technical analysis I have for you. We're going to switch over and I'm going to do a little bit of Matic and VeChain because I didn't show them this morning. This is, I told you guys, we I've been using this chart recently, the crypto bubbles, uh, and it's really, really, really fun looking. VeChain is the biggest mover of the week amongst my favorites that I like to follow here. It's up 18%, almost wow. 19% here over the last week. Matic is the other big one at 16%. I think it is the one, yeah, it was the biggest mover of the last 24 hours. Uh, as far as hourly, it's the biggest mover of the last hour, but weekly, these seem to be the two big ones. Yes, there's some other good moves for the other projects as well, but they were the two big ones. But I want to take a break because I did see, I want to give a special shout out to Tom Crown, who is in chat. Love seeing other technical analysts come in. Let me know, Tom, how I'm doing on TA. Uh, love to love to get you on the channel here soon, hear a little bit of what you're seeing. 
But uh, Tishram, did you see anything else in chat before we move on with TA? Well, Cryptex is also in the chat. Which Cryptex, is cool. come on, one of our moderators. Boom. Well, let's. Uh, if there's nothing else, let's go ahead and and kind of move into some Matic TA. So the first thing that is really important, I put this over in our Discord, the uh, Investing Bros Discord. But we just broke through a resistance level we'd been in. Yes, we had this breakout over here back in November, but this level, this level of resistance has been significant all the way since back here in July. And so breaking through that is the first level of nice bullish territories. But the, the question is, where should we look? If, if we can see Maddox still climbing up, what's a good price to keep your eyes on? And that for me, it's going to be about 123 for two different reasons. First of all, we got a nice little bull pennant right here. If you were to extrapolate this over, go down to the bottom and this would be a flag and move it over to a breakout opportunity. Come on now, great one, go with me. This gives us a nice little price prediction of 123. So that's the first reason. The other is if you were to go ahead and pull up the fixed range volume profile, during this whole time, you're going to find there's a nice little, let's see, that must be farther back than that. Let's go, let's go back to uh, prices back here. Um, there we go. It's going to load for me. Yeah, here we go. This is a nice little valley in a lot of volume. So there's a, there's a lot of money being pushed back up. Notice that's what we did back here in November. We came up right into this valley, kind of started climbing it towards the mountain peak, got a little overextended, came to the downside. But 123 is a level I'm keeping my eyes on for Matic. It is moving. It's going to be, it's one of my coins in this next bull run that I'm definitely keeping an eyes on and want to do a lot more with it. There's just one concern I have. Make sure you guys are keeping your eyes on the four hourly chart. We are developing some bearish divergence here. Uh, let's go ahead and look at this. Um, let's see, four hourly on the Matic. Yes, uh, right here. Yep, uh, we got right the price. The RSI over here is at 83 back in on the 13th, but the peak we just made came a little bit lower. We've seen this with Bitcoin. We've seen this with Cardano. We've seen this with others. So don't necessarily say, oh, there's bearish divergence. We have to go down. But it is something the bears, uh, the bulls should keep an eye on. It's like, all right, we're overextended. Let's keep, keep our eyes on what's happening here with bearish divergence. I think we also might have more. If we, I, I, th I think I saw a cleaner version of this. Yeah, he has daily chart. I don't know why in my notes I put the four hourly chart, but it, the real good looking way, the real way to look at it is here on the daily chart. So that's exactly the same timeline I'm looking at. We're coming back down here, but of course the price is going up. So keep your eyes there. I do think if the bulls can keep pushing, I like that 123 range. This is a this is kind of one of those things uh, that if I was you and you were in a long already, continue to hold on to 123, um, but watch that bearish divergence play out. If not, then I would also say uh, set up maybe a stop loss um, down here at 104, maybe even down here at one dollar if we were to start moving really to the downside. But if we're gonna go to the downside, watch us meet the levels of the lower band of resistance now turn to support around 95 cents. But I think Maddox still got a nice little push for it. Let's look at VeChain, also the big mover. VeChain just bounced back up into a nice little neutral range. We've been above it, we've been below it. These are the prices between about two cents and about, well, let's see, 2.1 cents and then a 2.5 cents. So nice move for it. It's again, it's gonna be a little bit overextended. Same thing, got bearish divergence starting to happen. Um, however, let's see here. Um, the Lux Algo actually has us going a little higher. I, I don't know if I'm going to believe Lux Algo on this one. I think that getting up towards this range right here on two, maybe a little higher is going to be possible. But the daily chart take profit for Lux Algo is saying, hey, we could go all the way up towards three dollars or three sorry dollars three cents. And guess what we have going on there? We have a strong buy signal. We have green candles and we have a green trend catcher. It's not guaranteed, but it's something to keep your eyes on. We're getting close to that being overextended on that reversal band, but even it, it's moving to the upside and we got a lot of room to go. So keep your eyes on VeChain. It is very interesting. Another thing that it just did, speaking of uh, bullish moves in the more macro timeline, is let's go out here and look at VeChain on this chart where I have my ribbons, my EMA ribbons. Guess what it just did similar to Bitcoin? or it didn't do, but it's about to do, is it looks very much like these ribbons are about to flash and turn green. You guys know I was talking about this on Bitcoin. Bitcoin just did this a couple of days ago, turning green for the first time since all the way back here in December of 2021, moving over to VeChain. It is looking like it's not officially turned there just yet. So let's wait for some confirmation. But you guys can see that 20 is making a mad dash to climb back above the 55. That would be majorly bullish. This is one of those indicators. It's going to be a new one you hear me talk about a lot more because it's a pretty faithful indicator at telling you when trends have been confirmed to the upside or the downside. 
So I'll keep you guys posted on that. That is all the TA we have for you guys on altcoins today. Uh, but we'll do a lot more next week. And if you want, again, in Discord, all the time people can ask me, hey, Tim, can you do some more TA on this coin or that coin or this coin? And we post things over in Discord. So make sure if you want more of that, you go join us. T-Shroom, yes. I am going to take a second to breathe. You take a second to breathe. Well, we've got a couple of super chat, or we got a yeah. super chat yeah. from Cryptex. He said, big shout out to everyone who joined the Patreon and Discord this week. Some great convos going down in there. Also, don't forget to smash the likes. Can't agree with that super chat anymore. Thank you so much, Cryptex. It's awesome. It's been great to work with you. Uh, but yeah, definitely uh, check out the Patreon. Check out the uh, check out the Patreon. We'll give you access to the Discord. All tiers on the Patreon. And there is a link for that in our description of this very video. And then we also had a demand from Marxist Leninist Chavista. Yeah. Uh, said, she said, uh, you better tell me where, who the creditors were or I will. <laughs> and if I'm being trolled, I'll leave a dislike. So uh, we welcome all folks of, of any political persuasion, no matter how upfront they are with, one, with what their political persuasions are. Um, and we will get to that story. But in short, the... The uh, creditors are pretty much anybody and everybody from governments, yeah. uh, from giant tech companies. And I, I think this is a good time, banks. potentially. And I, I'm just saying, you know, this is a, a nice view. I don't think it's quite our highest view day yet, but this is a high view day. Yeah. We're over 120 here on the concurrent. Um, so in case anyone's new and you guys are like, hey, what's this thing? What is Investing Bros? What is this live show? What should I expect? Every single morning, Monday through Friday, we go live, 9 to 10 a.m. We do. Eastern Standard Time. We do. We, we give the intro for the story in the very beginning, and then we spend the first half hour going through technical analysis, definitely covering Bitcoin, but then if there's anything interesting happening on other coins, we cover that as well. Second half hour, we break into news and then uh, announcements at the end, and we look at stocks as well. So if you guys ever come back and you're like, hey, when are they going to be talking about these news stories? It's the second half hour. If you're like, hey, when are they going to be talking about technical analysis? That's in the first half hour. So just a little a little uh, schedule of what the show looks like. But speaking of, let's let's jump in. If you have any thoughts, T-Shroom, on stocks, and then we'll jump into some of those nice stories. All right. Absolutely. So uh, all the Marxists and Leninists in the chat, uh, bear with us as we will be getting to, uh, we're going to do our market open here and then we'll be getting to those stories here in just a second. Uh, all right. So we'll start off here. I've got a Tesla screen pulled up and we are in market open now. We are at uh, 931, almost 932. So uh, Tesla gapped higher yesterday, as you can see, printing a, goodness gracious, a 10.6% gain yesterday. Uh, and then also it's 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 coming up higher today. It is overcoming some resistance. It's about to come into some resistance here uh, around 267 to sit kind of starting at probably 265. Yeah. So that if it can break through that, you know, that's probably not a bad entry point. Uh, we're focusing on Tesla here, guys. It's got a buy signal and a green trend tracer here on the daily chart. So Tesla looking very, very bullish. And I'm also seeing that sentiment echoed in the media. But let's start in energy where we usually start. Just wanted to highlight Tesla there in the early trading minutes. Natural gas getting a nice little green print to start the morning. Uh, but the but the futures contracts for natural gas were coming in uh, still almost 3% down. So oil coming in hot with a 1% to the upside movement in a candlestick already today. Uh, we don't want to see this cross the uh, 83.1, uh, 83 dollars and one cent mark because that will that will ultimately trickle into a higher inflation print later on in uh, in the quarters to come in this year. We want to see that price stay nice and low. And who doesn't want low oil prices? Uh, I know I do, but unfortunately, Lux Algo is giving it a strong buy in a in a green trend tracker. So that is more than likely bullish and could potentially go up. Uh, fundamentals. Just, just want to see those green candles come in. Yeah. Green candles would give us our confirmation on that. Absolutely. So, so continuing on down, you can see that the indexes today are printing red to start in the early trading minutes here of the New York Stock Exchange. And one thing I wanted to point out is that we thought that we were coming into a recession this year, but let's look at the NASDAQ. NASDAQ, one, two, three, four, five. And now six, I'm going to turn Lux Algo off here to really hit this point home. Six candlesticks of green in a row in Q1. Who would have thought that that's how we were going to start off our year? Obviously, there were more candlesticks in January, but look at this, five in a row. And uh, now today, it, it you know continuing that trend. Dow Jones, same thing, except this morning we're getting a red candlestick. 
Okay, so you see one, two, three, four, five in a row. Again, green candlesticks, and then the S&P, something similar. What you'll notice in the S&P this morning is that it has broken with yesterday's candlestick. It has broken through that multi-month line of resistance here, guys. This is really, really big. Uh, this isn't the perfectly drawn line, but this is this is a pretty big push through here. As you can see, it was trending in here, came down, came back up, made a made a uh, lower high. You know, basically cementing that we are in a, a bearish trend here. Uh, came back down, made a lower low, but now instead of making a uh, a lower a lower low in this trend, uh, closing somewhere in in the in the ballpark of of uh, 3,200, it actually reversed course. Here at 3,700, almost 3,800, and and made a move to the upside. Mm -hmm. So that is that is pretty bullish for a market that was supposed to be in a recession right now. And so we are pretty happy to see that, especially if we are in long positions. Uh, crypto, we'll take another look here. Uh, pretty much red across the board, and that has to do with the way that the market is interpreting the uh, the PCE data. It may have come in. It may be being interpreted slightly. Uh, more bearish than was anticipated, but my read of it was bullish. So it is the early minutes of response to that uh, information that, that printed at 830. So I wouldn't give it too much credence the way that it's uh, printing right now. But uh, ultimately, it kind of comes down to uh, Bitcoin, which is down 0.3. And then the Dixie, which is down here, which is up 0.3. So <laughs> it, almost in perfect parallel to each other, uh, the Dixie is printing a green candlestick this morning. Uh, and it did yesterday too. So that that is just kind of pointing out that may, there is a little bit of hesitation to buy this morning. Mm -hmm. That's reflected in the indexes. It's reflected across crypto. Uh, and that's going to be your sentiment for the early morning. Now, what I will point out here is that the... Uh, 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 actually, want I want to see what Tim has to say about yeah, this. Yeah, I, I think something to keep your eyes on is I, m some people might be waiting on a lot of that information coming out at 10 a.m. today. Uh, this is the, the Michigan. Yeah, the data. Michigan's at the Penning Homes. It was just it's all big information because when you're looking through the, the stocks this morning, some of them are green, some of them are red, but nothing major moving. No, nothing like really, really uh, explosive either way. Mm -hmm. I bet you 10 a.m. is where you're going to start seeing more moves happen yeah. uh, when they get some confirmation of what they already thought or whether it's different than they thought. So, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I, I agree with that. I mean, we definitely need to see. If there's more data to drop, then that's exactly why, you know, you might be seeing that. But um, your mid cap is actually not doing too bad this morning. Strangely enough, not exactly sure why that is, but you're seeing a nice little rotation to mid cap tech stocks. Uh, I know Ginny was doing really, really well yesterday. I actually sold out of the position for about 37 percent gain, which is which was pretty nice. Um, and I'm looking to get back in here at five dollars when it comes back down or if it breaks out above here uh, where it is now. Uh, all right, so that's going to be our market open. Let's go ahead and get into the stories real quick before I leave you. We did have the bond yields opening green. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the stories here. But before we do, we'll look at where we are, guys. 68 likes and 112 watching. Let's go ahead and narrow that ratio and get that popping. We're going to start off with the fear and greed index. Printing in greed for the first time and what did you say, Tim? It was since March? Yeah, it's been March. Back that peak that we had jumped up all the way uh, to $48,000. That was the last time we saw greed printed on the uh, fan greed yeah, index. It has been a while. So, yeah, back here. So, uh, pretty impressive stuff for us to be back in greed. And I got to be honest with you guys, I am feeling it. I, you know, I'm feeling a little bit of FOMO, not much, but I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I'm, is Bitcoin even going to come back down? Uh, below 15k now am I going to be able to get an entry that low I'm not sure so should I be buying now is some thoughts that I'm having doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to act on those thoughts quite yet but uh, that's why we watch the charts so intently polygon soaring eight percent ahead of the zk evm network update this is a network to the uh, intra polygon and ethereum environment that is uh, going to be pretty beneficial to polygon so says the market and if you have, we took just took a look, a deep dive into the Polygon charts, and this eight percent is uh, is well within uh, the truth. I mean, it was more than eight percent now, so um, pretty impressive movement there for Polygon. Well, Senator Ted Cruz wants vendors to accept Bitcoin at the Capitol. Look at him there, the uh, the Cruzster himself. Uh, 
the new directive would apply to officials tasked with overseeing day-to-day -day operations within the House of Representatives and Senate, encouraging them to work with persons that will accept digital assets as a payment for goods and food. So that is a, just a real quick document, a really quick article. It's not the first time Ted has, has lobbied for this type of thing to try to get Bitcoin into Washington and get that, you know, in the hands of legislators and rule makers there. It could be a pretty big deal if that were to go through because Bitcoin would be on the, on the top of mind for a lot more legislators who are forming the future of this country. Uh, but we're not going to leave the U.S. government quite yet. We got another story here. State Senator pushes bill to make Bitcoin legal tender in Arizona. Here is that Senator, Wendy Rogers. Look at her there. Good smile and face. She's got a familiar looking hat there. Uh, she is a Republican after all. But what is she doing here? Pro Bitcoin. She's got some stuff here she's got going on. Rogers cited data from investors from Goldman Sachs that BTC is the best performing asset in the world and announced that she launched a set of crypto bills. So we took a look at that uh, that article actually yesterday. She may be citing separate data, but we did look at it yesterday. Goldman Sachs is had reported that Bitcoin is their top performing asset for 2023. Pretty wild oh, stuff. Cool stuff. There's some pictures of the bills. Don't know how much that does for you. Um, getting some good use out of paper clips. Haven't seen one of those in a long time. Uh, but if passed into law, BTC will have the same status as the U.S. dollar, becoming an, an accepted medium of exchange for debt payments, public charges, taxes, and dues in the state. So that is a pretty big deal, too, that you'd be able to... Uh, pay your taxes and pay different uh, state charges. And I believe there was one more. Yes, indeed, there was. Rogers also participating in introducing a bill that seems to make crypto a tax-exempt property. Folks, if we could get that, that would be very, very, very big for the space because so many people would be able to take advantage of that and so many CPAs would begin uh, recommending that uh, more than likely. Hmm. Well, that's her Twitter there. If you want to sh send her some support, I'm going to go ahead and follow her on Twitter because she's doing the Bitcoin's work out there and uh, working really hard. Um, you know, this isn't I, I could care less if she's Republican or Democrat. I would I would support her because she is supporting the community that mm. we care about. She's got some interesting tags here, you know, and, you know, you may or may not disagree with everything that she believes in. But she's got the right position on Bitcoin. Well, we have made it. Marxist slash Len Leninist slash Chavista. We have made it to the big story that caught your attention and probably many others, as our thumbnail uh, indicated, and that is that FTX creditors, including Google, Meta, Circle, Genesis, uh, and other government officials are among the creditors listed. And these creditors are owed up to $3.1 billion, and there's about 50 among them, certainly more, but these are the ones that are at least listed. Can't imagine that there'd be that much more because this is a pretty exhaustive group. Um, but it starts off with the corporations, Ant Group, which I believe is a Chinese conglomerate, and then kind of unclear exactly how they're able to to um, invest in a crypto company mm. when, in fact, they are not they they are banned from doing so in China. So I remember this was a this was a pretty big deal. This is why this list was being withheld, uh, is because Ant Group is a Chinese company. So now it's kind of in question what's going to happen to them over in China. Uh, my guess is probably nothing because they're a giant corporation that's responsible for tax revenue. But uh, it, they, you know, they could pull a Jack Ma and the leadership there could, could kind of disappear. Not really sure. Also among the list, Google, Amazon, Meta, Netflix, LinkedIn, and Apple. Again, these are all people, these are all organizations that FTX owes money to. Let's keep moving. Uh, oh, uh, oh! So media outlets not as interesting, but Bloom, Bloomberg Finance, mm -hmm. uh, Wall Street Journal, CoinDesk, uh, Bazinga—you you would kind of expect that. Uh, but here's some uh, notable crypto firms that would be Coinbase, USDC issuers Circle, Galaxy Digital, and Binance, uh, among some pretty big ones there. And also, uh, the bankrupt firm is also indebted to Polygon Network and BitGo Prime, as well as Exchange AAX. So those are some pretty big ones there, uh, especially Coinbase. But then it also gets into U.S. and international government agencies that are owed money by the now bankrupt uh, FTX. So the U.S. Secretary of State of, Co of California, Colorado, Delaware, Arkansas, Alabama, and others appear on the FTX creditors list, which is kind of crazy to think about that. 
uh, but also the departments of revenue for Minnesota, Texas, South, and Connecticut, and California. You know what I bet this is, Tim, is I bet they just owe them taxes. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they're the Department of Revenue, that's probably what it is, state taxes there. Um, The Alabama Securities Commission, Connecticut Department of Banking, Arizona Department of Insurance. I'm not going to read all these guys, but you kind of get the idea is there's, there's a lot of really, like, these are old institutions in the United States, and these are just... Uh, it's kind of crazy to think that, you know, they've gotten caught up in this in one way or another. Again, um, not all of these just, you know, invested in FTX. They're just owed uh, money. And it may be from from legal fees. It may be just from filing fees in the state. Who knows? But uh, the ministry, of, and here's the international names, the Ministry of Finance of the Bahamas, the Australian Attorney General's Department, the Cyprus Securities and Exchange Commission, not a surprise there, uh, and then the Abu Dhabi Department of Finance and the government of the Virgin Islands. So lots of, uh, lots of names here, but we're not done. Wow. Prominent banks, Citigroup, Silvergate, Citigroup. Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan Chase, DBS Bank, Bank of Cyprus, and the Commercial Bank of Dubai, uh, BlackRock, Sequoia, Pantera Capital. Uh, and then you get the hotels and airlines, which is kind of almost not worth reading because it's just a bunch of hotels. You know hotels. You know their names. But that is some pretty wild stuff. So what happens here, Tim? Do you think that this is a contagion that is going to spread through all these companies and that they're going to capit- they're going to have to file for bankruptcy because of their exposure to FTX? Or do you think that you know these companies just and entities are just going to take a hit on the chin and probably keep moving? The ones that we've heard of before. Yeah. Google. They're not going to they're going to keep going on. You, you know, don't think this is no going to put Google underwater? I no, I don't. Uh, if Google goes underwater, it's for several other reasons. Yeah. Uh, the one company I saw on there that obviously is very recognizable that I'm like, oh, they probably took a, a hit from this was Netflix because you know, they got enough problems of their own. Yeah. Uh, they didn't need to lose money from here. But here's here's my question. I don't know if any <laughs> of these articles went into this. And teacher, I don't know if you know the answer to this. Three billion dollars. Mm-hmm. When you spread out all these companies, three billion dollars is what they're owed. Right. Is that three billion on top of the eight billion dollars of comp- customer funds that were lost, or is this include? Is does the eight billion include this three billion? It's a good question. I that's the, I don't know because so, because the words we've always read were eight billion dollars of customer funds, and now we're seeing three billion dollars of creditor funds. Mm-hmm. Is that bad wording? And it's actually well, three billion of that eight billion was creditors or is it no mm-hmm. two different things three billion to creditors eight billion of customer funds so we're looking at 11 billion dollars yeah of uh technically what they owe people yeah yeah it's possible um i mean the only thing that i'm really finding quickly that's uh giving any any answers to that effect would be this here this this paragraph ftx and its affiliates filed for bankruptcy in delaware November 11th and the highest profile crypto blowout, leaving an estimated 1 million customers and their investors facing total losses in the billions. That's so, I mean, that's so that's vague. That doesn't tell you anything. Right. Yeah. So like I said, I mean, it, it, there's not a ton of answers in this here article, but uh, more than likely that very question is going to be the point of a lot of contention for the, the attorneys who are going to be fighting over what's left of FTX. And, and then that leads into my next thought. Let's I don't want to spread false information, so I'm going to say, let's pretend for a second okay. that it is two different. You know, well, it doesn't really matter. Actually, I don't know why I'm even clarifying that. It doesn't matter which one it is. Let's mm-hmm. say the let's say it is uh, that that eight billion includes these three billion. So that mm-hmm. means five billion goes to customers. Mm-hmm. What are the chances that customers get their money before these businesses? Probably not likely, but it absolutely should be. Like that's going to be what's interesting to watch. Who gets money first? Mm-hmm. These creditors. Or customers, mm-hmm. I have a very sneaky feeling it's going to be the creditors. Yeah, well, almost definitely. I mean, we saw in the uh, Celsius case that the judge ruled uh, that all of the money belonged to Celsius. All of the money that was in the the Celsius Earn program belonged to Celsius according to their terms of service. And so anybody who was investing in Celsius Earn, and I believe even some of their wallet services. There's just all of a sudden, boom, like when you put your money in, it now belongs to Celsius. And if you didn't read the terms of service and didn't understand that, you know, you're pretty screwed. See, and, but that even goes to the problem. And that was one of the things that Sam Bateman Freed was kind of trapped in several times. Yeah. For example, so like I, I, I could understand some people trying to go down this route and saying, well, if you were just an FTX member, you signed up, you put your money on a public exchange. It wasn't your money anymore, mm-hmm. yada, yada. No, no. Remember one of the traps that Sam fell in 
was that he clarified and showed that they had documentation. When you signed your agreement with FTX, it said that that money would not be commingled and put into a different account, but that's mm -hmm. exactly what they did with it. So a, a very massive class action lawsuit, I think that every single FTX user, like directly, I'm not talking about people who got into Celsius and the Celsius put money in FTX. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about if you, it was you to FTX, you should have a good case to mm -hmm. get your money back because they violated their terms of service. It's not like they said, hey, when you give us their money, we can do whatever we want with it. And if we yeah. lose it, that's on you, right? It says when you signed it, that your money will not be commingled, will not be sent over to other things. And that's exactly what happened. So every, I feel like every single person mm -hmm. who put money into FTX, whether it's a creditor or an investor, every single person should legally be like they should be owed their money back for term for violations of terms mm -hmm. but that's we just don't we know that's not going to happen it's going to be a priority list and it's it's who gets the money first and that's what is, i'm a little upset about is i'm like in a real you know in a good world in a, in a proper system customers you should protect the customer first but i just don't think that's what the court's going to end up doing yeah. Well, I mean, you could look at it a different way, too, which is that crypto is uh, a Wild West industry. And if I'm a user of uh, an FTX service that is promising me 9% returns, but the investor in the back end of FTX, of the actual business FTX, is only being promised 4% returns, then who's taking the bigger risk, right? Uh, I, I mean, obviously, the person who is getting the most, most returns. That's a, that's a central pillar, central rule of finance is, you know, the more risk you're taking, the mm -hmm. higher the returns. Uh, so you'd have to expect that, and, and that is the precedent in the United States. If, you know, when banks go down, when financial institutions go down, it's the investors of the banks that actually get their money. It's not necessarily the cred the creditors are second. Mm -hmm. uh, or I'm sorry, not the creditors, the users of that bank. Right. You could, you could, the customers of the bank. But this is my only thing there is that like, like if you, if you, and this would be the last thing I say, if I put my money in a bank and the bank goes bankrupt or whatever, and, but they didn't violate my terms of services, I understand why I'm not going to get my money back, right? Even in exchange, let's say, let's say I put my money into Coinbase, Coinbase goes bankrupt, I lose my money. I, I understand legally, hey, that wasn't my money anymore. I gave it to them, but they went bankrupt. Yada, yada. Mm -hmm. It's completely different if the terms of services say, all right, when we get your money, we will not do this with it. And then that's exactly what they did. Now they just violated the terms of service. That's why I think money should be owed back. That's that's just my thought. I, let me know in chat if you guys agree, disagree. What do you guys mm -hmm. think? What do you think? It doesn't really matter what we think because we don't get a vote on this. But what do you think should happen with all yeah. of this? Give us your opinions there. Well, I think I know what V Slim thinks because uh, he said what uh, V Slim said. What do you think the odds of us getting anything back from Celsius? Most of my eggs were in that basket, sadly. Oh, uh, I'm going to put those odds, unfortunately, V Slim, pretty low. And here's why. Uh, so this is this is Judge Martin Glenn of the Southern District of New York said Celsius's terms of service made it clear it took possession of crypto assets deposited in its earn product. Uh, so if you had it in the earn product, I'd say the odds are are probably lower than ten percent, um, which would not be great, obviously. But um, not great. No. We wanted to shift into talking about kind of our experience so far. Yeah. With doing all this, before we do kind of leave, you know, uh, investing talk specifically, I wanted to make sure that you guys are up to date on the fact that there is a very big, uh, a very big thing coming up next week. That's the February on February 1st, the United, the United States Federal Reserve will be issuing their decision on the, on the Fed rate hike. Uh, right now it is, uh, 99% likely that the, the new rate will be uh, 4.5 to 4.7. Mm. Okay. Which represents a, is that a zero increase? Is this a zero hike or is that 25? Which, which one? Hike? 425. It should, the zero, it, we're currently sitting between 425 and 450. So if it says 450, 475, that's 25. 25. Yeah. So it's about a, it's about a hundred percent likelihood according to the CME <laughs> futures that that's going to print a uh, 25 the, the decision will be uh, 25 basis points. Um, obviously nobody knows, uh, except for Jerome and he may not even know at this point, but th that is going to be next week. And I believe it's Wednesday. Yeah. So next technically week. they meet on Tuesday to discuss and yep. decide, and then they decide early Wednesday morning and then they key at yep. the press conference. So, but that is definitely coming up rapidly and it's extremely important. So we want yeah. to make sure you're clued in. In case anyone's wondering, uh, we will not be going live for the meeting, um, because of other work we have, but there's lots of other great live streams you can catch. Speaking of him, he was in chat here. Tom Crown, I know he always goes live for those. 
Uh, I think that's one of his big, that's his one of his big catches. He's been really big in the FOMC stuff. So uh, he puts on a good show over there if you guys want to go watch with him. Um, there's lots of other crypto influencers that go live during that. So there will be a plenty there in are. the space. And in the future, maybe someday, t and we'll do some of those live streams. Events. Well, I'm not necessarily ruling it out for this time. It just well, your we're schedule not, allow, my schedule won't allow that. It might it might allow it for me, but yeah. uh, we'll see. Uh, I'm I'm not saying whether it will or not. Yeah. Yep. 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 Well, that's good. Let's kind of transition here. And and this is for you know for anyone who's here and this is your first time. Thank you so much for being here. Consider subscribing to the channel. We're gonna kind of move in and, and talk about some stuff just for the people that have been subscribed for a long time and are are part of this community. It, as we mentioned in the intro. It, it feels like we've been doing this show for like six months. Like it's, that's how it feels to me. It feels like we've been doing this for a while. And I mean that in a very good way. I love doing it, but I just feel like we've been here for a while. But I'm going back and looking. Our first show was November 30th. Mm -hmm. So it technically hasn't even been two whole months of the show. But yet there's been so many fantastic things that have happened. And I want to ask you some questions, Tisha, about what you're thinking is. But just in case you guys are wondering, like in those two months, uh, we now have, we're almost to 2000 subscribers. I think we're, we're getting close to being about a hundred subscribers away from hitting 2000. Um, we have well over 5,000 watch time hours. So to on YouTube, in case anyone ever wants to create their own YouTube channel or, and they want to you know grow that on YouTube, you can get monetized and you start getting paid for doing things with super chats and get paid for ads. You have to have a thousand subscribers and you have to have 4,000 watch time hours. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've seen, I've had other friends that do this, that it takes them literally an entire year to get monetized. We did it in less than two months. And that is because of all of you guys, just your outpouring of love and appreciation. So thank you to you guys for all that. But we've been able, you know, we, we I don't know every single day, but we try our, try our best, not only do our live show, but we then also put on an afternoon piece of uh, content and that's going to only get bigger and better. But I've been, I've been actually really happy with our ability to keep, to do our other jobs, to continue yeah. to, to live our life, but then also still be able to put out content. Uh, and again, it's just going to get bigger and better. I'm going to give you guys a little teaser. I don't know when we're going to post it. I can't give you a date, but we're working on something uh -oh. behind the scenes. Uh, and uh, it, it's going to be a fun one. This is not going to be an informational, educational. It was just a thought that I had of like, man, nobody really, really knows where the market's going. And, and everyone wants to know, how do you know how to trade this? Well, things happen all the time that mess up trade. I'm like, let's just see how good our dogs do. So uh, there's going to be a video of a competition. A sneak peek. A competition between my two dogs, Beamer and Coco, uh, they're going to be trading against each other. And if it does really well, we might make a series like once a month or so, we put out a new dog trading series. Mm -hmm. um, and guess what? I can tell you right now, after the results, they were both profitable. I'll just <laughs> go ahead and tease that. Both my dogs choosing trades were profitable. Yeah. So let me, um, let me show really quick. I'll give you guys a teaser. Uh, Check it out. Oh so my, there's Coco, Coco running toward it. Which one does he go to? You will have uh, to she. find out. Coco's she. I don't. I don't see gender. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I just go with the gender that I think that the dog is. So, um, so w more importantly, which coin will Coco have gone for? And uh, you'll have to find that out when we release the video, which we'll be uh, working on very hard in the background. Yeah. It's super fun, guys. I laughed my way through editing the oh, entire yeah. video. It's a lot of fun. Like we're we're probably gonna narrate it. Like we're gonna act like play by play callers. But like even just watching, because he put a lot of the film the stuff together. Even just watching the two of them go for it, it was very hilarious. Coco, Beamer, I, Beamer. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Beamer's my favorite dog. Beamer's my favorite dog I've ever owned. So I am a big sucker for Beamer. But Coco, I'm going to go and put it out there. Coco, I think, is going to become a star. Uh, I think so, too. Coco's, she's a special dog. My <laughs> wife and I uh, joke about Coco that she might have uh, a dog-tism. Um, so I don't know if YouTube allows that or not. But uh, she she's special uh, and and in, in some of the best ways possible. But <laughs> you'll see some of her chaos uh, when we watch when you guys watch that. Uh, but anyway, let's let's go back to the, the channel. That was a that was we went longer into that sneak peek than I thought we would. Yeah, it's a good tangent. But <laughs> but Tisha, what are some of your favorite moments and things uh, that, about these last two months doing investing, bros? Honestly, the last two weeks of successfully planning. Working with uh, Cryptux and CryptoSec guy uh, to put together the Discord and the Patreon uh, has been really, really awesome and, and smooth. I mean, there's there's been like little issues, but we got through it and we fixed them. And we le I've learned so much more about Discord and Patreon in these last uh, couple weeks. But getting that plan, getting that set up, uh, finding and agreeing on exactly what we want that to be like for you 
uh, has been really good. And mm. now that it's launched, it's just it's just so fun. And being in the Discord, it's taken off. I mean, we yeah. you could you could literally spend all day in there. There's always somebody talking about something. Yeah. Uh, whether it's AI generated pictures or uh, new stocks that they're checking out. Um, me and Eric Wallen have definitely been going back and forth quite a bit there's about some, Chinese there's stocks. Some great and stuff. stuff going on in there, yeah. So it, it's a lot of fun. Um, that was definitely big. Uh, we tried out a lot of shorts, and we haven't been doing shorts as much. Yeah. Let us know in the chat if you guys want more shorts from us. Um, different, but we've tried out different things. Let's see. Um, I mean. I think the biggest thing is, is definitely the Discord and the Patreon and yeah. just being able to get back on a show and be consistent. I mean, for a while, I mean, for a long time, that's all Tim. That's what you did that every single day. That's and like, then that's you like did a year it. and a half of my life. Yeah. Yeah. And now we, now we get to do it. And I, I enjoy it a lot, guys. It's, it's, I mean, we know, we know crypto so well, uh, at least, you know, I, I think we do. And it's like, you know, it would hate for all that knowledge just to go to waste and mm. for us to just go have day jobs so we're really passionate about doing this and uh, we think we have an edge and we we think we can we can hopefully present that edge in a way that you can benefit so yeah that's why we do it yeah i, I think uh, for me like it has been it's been fun to continue the show and and get up every morning i, I i've told this to my wife told this to teach room just so you guys know when i when i decided to do the show the reason why was not because it's like well let me see if this is what i can do i felt like i had a talent i felt like i was good at ta i felt like i could put on a good show but i was honestly i was like i can't imagine myself walking away from this community uh this crypto community that has been amazing again it's now been two years it, officially i have been heavily involved in content creation for you for crypto for two years uh, and I can't imagine doing it without you guys. So I, I came back and I started that for you guys and you guys have just blown me away with all of your love and support. Um, you know, getting to create that discord and, um, and, and experience what's going on over there. It's not just us teaching you guys. Like I want you guys, that's something I'm very passionate about is that I feel like I have areas of dare I say expertise. I feel like that's a, it's a hard one to say. I feel like I you, you'd probably need more like years and years and years and, and thousands of hours of doing something before you call yourself an expert. But I feel like I'm pretty good at certain areas. Other areas, I'm very weak. Uh, T. Shroom fills the gaps on all those areas. T. Shroom's had these areas where I would say, oh man, he's darn near close to what I would call an expert. And other areas, like, all right, he's still learning. And then there's other areas that him and I don't have that we want to learn from other people. And that Discord is going to be a beautiful place for that happening. Like, mm -hmm. already, there's times where I'll ask a question or T. Shroom asks a question. And one of the members in chat, they're like, oh, well, it actually is like this. Uh, for example, NFTs. I am not an NFT guy whatsoever. T. Shroom, I know, dabbles a little bit. But we got Crypto Set Guy in chat who's done a lot more stuff with NFTs. It's going to be a community where everybody works together and offers what they're good at, what they spend their time doing. Because there's no way to be an expert at technical analysis and to be a stock market expert and to follow up all the news and to know everything about NFTs and to know everything about staking and how to you know yield farm it. You, it's almost impossible to be an expert at all those fields. But when you group all of your efforts and you group your thoughts and you talk with each other in a community, that's what allows everybody to experience the best of all the situations. So that's what I'm excited about with this community, with that Discord as we move forward. A lot of things coming on there. Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, I would say another another fun thing is being at my house. I, so I, my commute to work is very uh, very nice. Yeah, mine's not bad. I, I drive about ten minutes um, from where I live to here, and uh, it gives me an opportunity to just reflect, yeah. you know, and prepare my quote of the day and things like mm. that. So, um, yeah. Well, most, most of the time I'm trying to get warm, even though I live down here in Florida. I'm sure you guys have experienced that uh, getting in the car, waiting for the heater to get hot enough to drive and um, listen this morning when i let the dogs out and i worked out in my garage too so i get the cold it was uh you walk out in the garage you're like ooh, it was chilly it is, i uh, asked i asked nippy. I, I always ask alexa when i have a good idea that it's going to be cold i say what's the temperature outside and alexa this morning said 39 degrees ooh, nice and and florida 39 is rough with that humidity yeah um, it is yeah. well hey we're gonna go ahead and wrap up this stream Shout out to all of you guys. We got we got 102 people still watching here. We got a couple more likes. We can definitely get those four finger mittens up above 100. But I want to just, especially as this last show of this week, thank all of you guys for being a part of this community, being a part of, of my morning, of T. Shroom's morning. And I, I hope that you guys feel the same way about us. Continue to grow with us. I mean, you guys are the OGs at this point. This channel has got a long way to go to the upside. Two months down. 4,000 to go. We love all of you. We will see you on Monday next week. With that said, you guys have a great weekend.